you are welcome to this week's community show where we talk about uh, issues that pertain community, uh, mainly in Uganda. In this show, we believe that stories of people in different communities are important for the betterment and advancement of all societies. We believe in learning each other, we believe in sharing uh, stories, but also be in uh, dissecting issues that affect us so that the stakeholders, all that are concerned, pick from and make society better and, and that we ourselves make society better. This month, we do continue to celebrate women. We have handled other women and specifically today, we want to talk to see the women in sports. We want to hear from the women in sports. We want to talk about issues of women. Now, it's not a common, um, it's not common to hear from women in sports. And it's also not common to have women engaged in sports because of the very many uh, reasons, mainly because of the, dis the uh, disadvantaged position that women uh, are forced into. In However, there are women because of patriarchy and all those other injustices towards women. Women have been pushed away from sports. Women have been pushed further and told that sports is not for them, sports is not another issue. However, women stand up as they usually do, as they have learned to continually do, push back and come to the forefront, engage in sports, and even here yeah, in that sports. Today, to help us further celebrate women in sports, dissect, you know, um, what it means to be a woman in sports, to further also bring the conversations and stories of women who are active participants in sports. I'm joined by uh, a panel of discussants who, with whom we shall have this uh, great conversation. Anita, Pauline, and Irene. I'll ask each one of them to introduce themselves at its particular time, beginning from Anita, Pauline, and then Irene, and we shall proceed. Over to you. I'm by name of Naiva Anita. I'm a coach. I'm a prayer. I play football. I play netball. I coach football. I coach netball. I coach Mbara Sports Academy, and I coach even schools. I have Club D in football. Thank you. You have Club D? What? Calf D in football. Please help us understand what Calf D is. Calf D with, in football, you begin with Calf, with beginner's level, then Calf D, Calf C, and continue okay. to be a coach. Okay, thank you very much. How about you, Pauline? Um, I'm called Pauline Omcha, uh, Fufa Delegate, Western Uganda, and um, a referee by profession, but not active by now and uh, a footballer as well. A CEO of Mbara Royals Football Club. Yes, and over to Irene. I'm called Irene Babazi Muhumza. I play volleyball. I'm the manager of Cobap Uganda Volleyball Club, as well as the treasurer. I'm on the committee of Uganda Women's Volleyball Association as the GS. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now to delve into the conversation, I want to is yes, to begin with you, Pauline. Now, um, share with us your story. How did you uh, venture into sports? Oh, thank you. La for the first time, um, I think I was in primary school and my dad was a coach, like not so serious football. So when I joined secondary school, that is a bit hard. 
I wasn't. They were. They. Were, I was so small that people would not put me on the first team, but I was doing well. So they picked up me. Then I joined. After that, I joined Mary Hill High School. We went for nationals. Later on, I went to Mbara University of Science and Technology. And unfortunate, they didn't have a university team for ladies. So I have a friend of mine who, who knew and is like, oh, so you're going to kill your talent from there because there's no way I was going to play football. And so they picked me and told me, can you join refereeing? I was like, yeah, because that's the best I would do because there was no university playing foot, women football. So I joined refereeing in um, 2018. Uh, we went for training in Kabale, we qualified. I started officiating junior league in FUFA. Then with time, I picked up interest of joining an administration in FUFA, where I, st I stood on um, I stood on the district level as a FUFA delegate, female. I went through to the regional level, where I also qualified as um, an opposed delegate. So I joined for I uh, joined. FUFA as a FUFA delegate. And later on, I was inspired to start up a team, a football team for ladies. That is Mbara Royals Football Club that plays in FUFA Regional League in Mbara. And uh, so when I, when I started that team, I picked also interest of playing in my team. I'd taken long without playing football. So I joined that team and got up girls that were determined to play. Though facilitation wasn't so good from my side because I wasn't earning a lot, but girls really wanted it. So I was not facilitating anyone, but they would come and train and play. So I think that is my experience. Thank you uh, for sharing with us your story. It's, it's it's good that you're still now you're you are you are you are player. You say you play now. You play. You you are playing. Mm, I play, but, but not so serious because we gained yeah. weight. I did so <laughs> just to support my girls when they are in the pitch. I go there like for a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, also you are see. Also, maybe you are you are most <laughs> in administering and running the club, and you don't. Time to uh, play. Okay, I uh, will come to Irene. Irene, share with us your story. Uh, how did you gain it? Yeah. Okay, um, I started way back in senior one. In senior one, I was at Chizoba Girls Secondary School. I would just go like any other normal girl to join sports, to play around, just normal games. Then somehow, somewhere, I found myself in the volleyball court that was near to. Uh, we had separate courts, the learners and those who know. So I was at the learners court and the sports teacher spotted me and put me on the main team. So literally I joined, when they put me on the main team, uh, my interest increased and then and then I never looked back. I played through my secondary. I was playing football and volleyball, but concentrating more on volleyball. So when I joined campus, it was must. I joined Barra University of Science and Technology. Um, volleyball for ladies was not that much given interest. So once in like for the whole of my three years, we played like once or twice. Few tournaments, inter universities would just be neglected, take the men and whatnot. It would be so hurting, but we had no way out. I remember I even stood as um, treasurer on the post, but it was won by a man. Like generally the whole, the whole committee was dominated by men. 
I finished campus. I came to Kampala. I, I found a club called Up Uganda, trains near Makere University. So I joined that one and I've been in volleyball since then. I joined, was given captainship for like four years after I became a manager because I knew the club so well. Up to now, I'm still a manager and a treasurer and a captain. Oh. And hmm. I like it. You, you still play? Yeah, I still do play. I have three kids, but I still play. Actually, I still play as a captain and I'm the main player in that team. I'm curious, which number do you play in uh, volleyball? Power attacker. I'm a power attacker. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. But uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it was my sport in, in school, volleyball, but it, and I still, whenever I get you know time here and there, I do uh, play some. I think boosting is also quite something I like. Um, <laughs> Anita, let's, let's hear your story. Uh, I started football and netball from primary. Then in secondary, I went to Chizova Girls, where I became even a minister, a sports minister, because I think it's like a habit at home. All my uncles, my aunties, my cousins, they are sports. So, I think we have a challenge. So in a level, I got an injury. My parents started stopping me from being from playing football and netball. But later they changed my school. They changed from Wampeo SS. They took me to Valley College. Because in Valley College, there is no sports. So they wanted me to stop playing football and netball. But after senior six, I went to Chambogo University, where I joined football again but I end up getting an injury. I had to stop, I kept on netball. So I played netball up to now. I'm still playing netball. So um, from university, I came to Mbarara where I started coaching little kids. I joined Barara Sports, it was Women Take the Lead, sponsored by Premier Schools. And we went to cover a league for course. It was beginner's course. I attended the course for coaching. Then from there, I started coaching with Mbarra Sports Academy, led by Coach Salim. So I stayed there. I went another, for another course led by, uh, it was also under um, Take the Lead, Premier Schools. It was in, in Angelo. So we attended for almost a month. From there, I came back. I kept on coaching schools, different schools, or netball, football, but my intention was to keep on improving in coaching skills. So from there, I joined the second school, it's called Nyamitanga SS. It's for boys, because in academy we train mostly boys. So I started coaching those boys, but everyone was discouraging me. How are you going to manage those boys? Eh? You know, lady coaching boys, it's not something very easy. But I managed to beat some schools. Then I went for nationals. From there, we came back. Some members encouraged me to go for Cup D. So I went for Cup D in, Ch in, in, in uh, I forgot. I went for Cup D. Then from there, in Hoima, that side of Hoima, we did Cup D. But now I'm still. Okay, thank you very much uh, to each one of you. Your story. Now we want to 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 uh, go into the part where you uh, you can share how what are some of those challenges that you have encountered as a woman uh, in this sports um, field already. You have um, as some of the you know. Support. Yeah, and there, but can we hear from you some of those challenges that you encounter as a, a woman when it comes to being involved in, in sports? I'll begin with you, Anita, then we shall have Irene Pauline. Okay, thank you. We as ladies, we have many challenges. We have personal challenges, practical, economic challenges. 
we have many challenges as ladies. Game data is one of them. Engagement, the public, or fans. You know, these fans, they are a bit stubborn, especially when it comes to we ladies. Performance, sherry, to we ladies on the pitch and off the pitch mm -hmm. is also a challenge. And for us ladies, we have many challenges. We have some other challenges, personal challenges. You find that you have painful periods. They stop you from training to some ladies. You find they can't manage to train. And when you find that team is being caught by a male, it will be difficult for them to understand that. That's why we usually encourage that at least if a team, there is a lady for ladies teams, then you find the fundings and budget. You have a budget, we as a team, but we can't even manage that budget. Reason being, we don't have sponsors. We don't have funds as ladies. Funds in the in teams, in the football teams, especially for ladies, it's very difficult because many people don't vary us. Physical idea. You find that some people are just, they are there, yeah? they, know, they know football is there, but they don't value ladies to play football. Emotional issues. We ladies, we are ever emotional in different ways. You find that the way I behave is different from someone else. Mm, we have uh, parental care. We need a parental care more than boys. For the case of boys, they can manage everything. But for us ladies, we need care. We don't have confidence as ladies. Reason being because of the people around us, because of the fans. So you can't stand on your own to say that really I can do it. No, you can't. Then we have a problem of facilities. For example, if I can give an example in Barra, we have pitches, but I've never had a pitch in for ladies, no? Very difficult. You go to Kacheka, you find there is a team there for men. You have no artist. The only thing they can tell you, go behind the goal and train from there because it's a team for ladies. So they don't vary us. So we don't have facilities and we don't have access of it, no. You find that you have a, 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 you have a pitch in Ikacheka, but that pitch is not yours. You have a pitch in BSU, but that pitch is not yours. You have a pitch in Nyamichiobola, but it's not yours. And all those pitches, they, they have teams for boys, not ladies. Then, we have um, uh, undervalue. They don't vary ladies at all. They don't, ladies, especially in sports, especially in football. We are very done. I've been saying uh, bigger games, they are going for finals, but I didn't trace any lady team for football there. I saw football boys and netball means they don't vary us in football. That means we, we are just it's like we are wasting time. So if even us, we don't touch encourage us. So if they don't encourage us, discrimination, there is harassment. Sometimes we can be harassed. For example, what I've been telling you about the facilities, you reach there, you, you start a training, someone just come and say, no, for you just go aside. You ladies, what are you going to train? Eh? Harassment, they just harass us as ladies and you find that we get some challenges. I think there are too many, but I can't say it all. Yeah, Thank you very much. At least. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing, us, sharing with us um, those challenges. Uh, Irene, do you have um, some challenges to add and this could also be those that you have encountered personally uh, uh, yes irene yes yes uh, and it's okay to put to have your video on yes so i don't differ from what the speak, speaker talked about the previous speaker majorly what we majorly face are facilities and uh, now for us what we have resorted to because volleyball is a game that involves less players so it's a game that doesn't need big space for it to be active. So what we do, we share courts. We share days on training. 
if let's say Tuesday and Thursday is reserved for ladies and then other days for men. But either way, men still stay a big number. So at the end of the day, you find yourself training with men. All my campus life, I think ladies never got a chance of maybe this is a training basically for ladies. You train with men, then reach the other side, compete with people who train as only men. And then um, another challenge is on the emotional bit they talked about. Ladies, I think naturally are emotional. Putting them up back on their game is hard, especially that time when they're in their periods and they will not talk. And if you're to see seemingly like it's almost the same period when everyone is there, there is a time we had games and almost half of the team were in the same thing. Coach would not figure it out. You as a manager, you will sing, but you don't want to show it to the coach because it's it's a little bit um, unethical for you to let other people know what is going on. But somehow, somewhere it would put us down. And then another thing is begging for funds uh, for the game to move on. If you're to see in Uganda, the, the money that is released for sports, um, they first cover those up, up teams. So these teams down, which are the root, the grassroots, they get less funding. Actually, funding is majorly on individual basis, personal basis. Us managers are the ones who have to get money. So if you're asking for funding outside, um, and it is a ladies' team, the funders have a feeling of ladies do not do much on court. They do not pull out their best. After all, they are ladies, they are weak, naturally. So giving you that funding, you have to base on the boys' team for you to get the funding, which is putting us down. So if the government can really do something about the ladies, like focus on women, on women, because uh, women are facing very big challenges. Anita said it all, so that is a fear I can add. Maybe in due course I can remember another, but for now that's it. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, those and yeah, it means it means a lot that you have shared, you know, those ones. Um, and yeah, indeed, we shall be uh, before we leave this conversation, we shall uh, again go into the section of um, what we what we can do uh, as you know all together. What would the solutions be to some of these challenges? Uh, Pauline, please share with us, you know, you could add to some of these or further explain and also share how these have, uh, you know, impacted on you. I would recommend that uh, we, you know, have our videos on because uh, this is a YouTube um, show. Okay, over to you, Pauline. Uh, thank you. Um... Me personally, I'll talk about uh, an administration and uh, managing girls, how it hard it is. Because first and foremost, me, I have a challenge of some players uh, of uh, having parents who are not well educated about sports. And it becomes a challenge to get a player on the team. Even when you have spotted her that she's really good, but now getting to their parents eh? and some parents ask you, what will we gain? What is she going to get? Of course, me as a young manager, I will not promise like we will get money or what, because they really don't know. So it becomes a challenge. You call a player that, you know, we have a league and she's like, call my dad or my mom. And I don't know if I will maybe make it because my dad is tough. He doesn't like football or something like that. Then we have a challenge of using uh, school school players, uh, girls who go to school and maybe they're in boarding schools and now getting them from school also becomes a challenge because you are responsible for everything in case they give you that child or they don't, in, most of the time, most of them refuse to give players out that you go and play for, for your team or something. Maybe you find out that they have exams so it's also a challenge. Then we have a challenge of uh, 
personally, my team, we are in the league that is down. So that league is less facilitated. By the way, not less facilitated, it's not at all. And we get a challenge that there are very few women who love sports, like who would love to be managers, very few. So we get a challenge of, have, of having few t teams and at the end of that day, they withdraw. They can't play anymore because maybe they are lacking finances. And most of other women discourage. Like, oh, how do you, what are you even talking about? You, so we also have challenges of uh, girls not playing because maybe my boyfriend is here. How is he going to run? Okay, they lack confidence. Most of the girls lack confidence in football. Feel like, ah, how will my boobs shed? Oh, how will I run? My boys are seeing me. So they start shying off and becomes a challenge for some of us. I think most of them were said by other previous panelists. So that is all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the issues that I would want to again ask that I know disproportionately affect women in, in sports. Um, one stereotypes, of course, all of you have or the other referred to um, But then there is the issue of pay, unequal pay. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what your experience is on this issue of unequal pay when it comes to uh, women. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, you call in. Okay, like her. An equal pay now, personally, is it all about players or? No, like generally, you? generally, in, in, you know, how, how have you in, in, experienced this? Could be you all, could be maybe not be you, perhaps the people you work with uh, give you equal pay with your male colleagues, you know, but generally you could comment about, because for a fact, in many spaces, there has been a, an equal pay. Men are paid more in sports um, than, than, than women. So I'm wondering what the case is like in your circumstances or what you've heard or seen around in, in Uganda. Um, about an equal pay, uh, I think w when it comes to football, we all give all we all give in what we can. I'll give an example of, of uh, crested cranes, Uganda. Uh, I feel so bad that our players, like most of the times, I think they don't get what men get because me personally, I've seen Uganda cranes sounding more than women. So, that that really is that really affects us because it demoralizes prayers and and I don't think it's right because it discourages players from participating and most of the times that's why teams fall because people feel girls feel why is a man paid more than me yet we are playing same football maybe we are on the same level. And maybe we are all in elite league and the other ones are in big league, but they are paying more than us or they are being facilitated more than us or cared more than us. They just ignore women because maybe we have that weak point of us being ladies. But I think that should be improved because we believe what can be done by men in sports, a woman can do it because our sports in Uganda, most especially on the side of football, we are growing so fast and now you can imagine Crested Crane is doing very well than Uganda Cranes. I think we should be paid more than men or equally balanced. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, uh, this was actually a big, what you have alluded to in the end of Crested Crane and Uganda. It was going to in the in, in the 
female team soccer you know foot, that the football team is way more successful than the one for men you know yeah. Yeah. then the one for men was paid higher than mm. um you know the one for, for 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 women and that had gone on for years until um a big discussion began about three, four years ago of an equal pay. You know, these are people who are world champions. The USA, I think, has won the World Cup for women football. And um, the, 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 the US men's team, I don't think it has even ever reached uh, semifinals. But it's it was um, a, a big discussion, and we must say, after a long time, the women won, and there was even a bill that was passed in the parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, but they were not. They were. They, these women were being discriminated in terms of payment, not because of competence, not because not that they were incompetent or anything, but just because they were women. You know, it was mm -hmm. just a entrenched patriarchy. But um, so I understand now in a very traditional um, setting like. Uganda it could also be, you know, the case. I don't know. Irene and um and 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 Anita, you could share about it later, but maybe uh as we're handling other you you'll you'll share with it the next time for the question comes. I also yes, equal pay and equal pay, but I want us to yeah, issue drugs, drug one how. Um, in report periods where there's use of drugs in sports and I'm wondering how women interact with that on, and are affected with that. So yes, Anita, please share with us the issue of anicope and drugs and also stereotypes that come with being a woman in sports. Yes, Anita. Okay. That challenge of uh, an equal pay, you find that for us, yes, for us ladies, they pay us little. You find that you have a team for boys and a team for girls. Then the the payments are not equal, but you can do the same the same work. If I can give an example of coaches, we coaches we have those challenges. I will train up a team. They will pay less. Someone else is a man is going to come to pay to train the team. They will double even more. It's like we ladies, they don't bury us. They take us to be all cheap. And we are not cheap at all. We are not cheap at all. In fact, they're supposed to pay us more to encourage us. I think we are few coaches. Like you find like like three coaches like this and like twenty coaches like you just move up you find they're like ladies and like more than men instead encouraging us in payments they just discourage us so I will stand I'm doing the same work and we have give the same tactical rules, but um, um, why are they really important? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll be discouraged. It will get discouraged to go all in. I'll say no. they're not getting money. It's so yes. We are sorry, Anita, your network has uh, made it hard for us to hear you. Sorry, network. Yeah, but you can go on now. Yes, the network is still, we shall still give you okay. a, a time. I'm, um, I'm saying that, for example, like, Uganda crime. Please carry on. No, carry on, we cannot hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, over to you, uh, Irene, on this. On this. Um, okay, to talk about payment, basically volleyball. Um, I don't think there is any payment involved. Because if you're to see people put in a lot, 
people put in effort. Uh, the resources are way too much, but the payment is not there at all. Actually, mm, Irene's network has okay. Um, okay, um, but we shall still give an opportunity to all those that have not, not finished uh, those points to, to complete them. Now I want us to go to the next part, and um, that is looking uh, for solutions. We want to generate ideas on how this can change, this can be better. Um, yeah, many issues, many challenges you've mentioned. And it could be, of course, lack of confidence, um, sexual harassment. I mean, harassment, I don't know whether someone talked about sexual harassment, but there was an issue of harassment and also violence against women, um, was bullying. Um, you know, there were many issues that were talked about. Uh, inadequate facilities for women. Oh, Irene, I see your back. Please carry on. Now we get less funding, like literally none, because most clubs in Uganda of volleyball are managed by individuals. They're the ones who put in their money. We get less from external bodies. And even if that little that is gotten by individuals, they usually like investing it in men. Few will invest in women. The reason as to why you'll see less or few women's club compared to men. The men make four series, the women only two series. So literally, we don't gain much concerning money. I will not say even men get a percentage, but either way, ladies still stay below the, the average. Then um, there is some issue you talked about, I've forgotten, apart from the inequality of income of, of money. What else was it? Yeah, you need to be reminded? Drugs. Yes. Drugs, the issue yeah. of drugs so, um i don't i don't i don't know if it's me it's me was not so keen about the drug use among the volleyballers but i've not seen it of lately uh, within the clubs that i know because i know most of the clubs i know that in a bit i've trained from most grounds where people train from i've interacted with many so I, i've not heard or seen the drug issues maybe alcohol that one is which is so common uh, some clubs literally, you see, they misuse it on court. Someone is on court, but so drunk and playing. But for drugs, I can't be sure. Maybe if they use it like when we cannot really see, but I, I don't think it is so rampant in volleyball. Yeah. Now, and then ask you a personal question. You are a man, you too? Yes, please. You said another personal question your mother no your mother yes of, two. of three of three mm. yes, perfect i mm. uh, your, your, your time. i don't get you well i think network or something okay so you said you're a mother of three and uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah share with us being a mother it's a mother and then sports, how I can balance that too? Is it the question? Yes, yes. Okay. So being a mother is, um, I think I gave birth to my firstborn when I just joined at the club. I'd spent like two years. Of course, at first it was a little bit hard having a baby and then play at the same time. But because I wanted to stay in shape, I wanted to stay in sports, I had to work out. It was, it is, I, I must say, it takes, it takes courage, it takes sacrifice, uh, it takes a, a bit more focus for you to stay in sports and then at the same time be a mother. Once you're done with the first born, you get used to the routine. The rest becomes like any other normal business because the only challenge came in with the first born. Um, now the mother figure in me has to come up and then the way we dress, uh, especially the, the, the volleyball, we are so like, uh, I may say indecent, like so, so, so short things. And then the mother in you is still telling you, you're not supposed to be like that, you know? So you opt for long things, but you have to stay in that team. 
So either way, it's not easy from the start, but once you get used, it is very easy. Because you might, you, I would go with my baby when uh, he was around six months. I would move with her, with him. I, I, I went back into sports after six weeks of delivery in the system and actually would not even tell that given back or maybe I have a young baby. So it starts right from the initially, like even when you're pregnant, um, that's when I disappeared, gave back, came back. So a few people even realized I had gone. Uh, so either way, you find a way of, of incorporating that too. And it's not easy. It's a hard task. But given it your, if you give it your all, it is easy. With the first one, it is hard. But once you get into the system, the other, the other ones, you just keep producing, playing, producing, playing. Like, it gets normal. Yeah. With us, on the issue, but I mean, it's, it's okay. It's okay, of course, to in whichever way you feel. Yes and will also be easy for you to do your sports. But yeah, I mean, the pressure. As expected, honestly, we, we don't put, uh, we shouldn't, I know many people do, but we shouldn't put so much pressure on the players because the sports does different. And, okay. In shorts, in shorts on the pitch, because honestly, that is the nature of, of, of that job, of the sport. So I also encourage all the other people who even body shame uh, sports to various reasons, easy movement, easily, you know, because you're using the body as much and you don't want any other thing to sort of like inconvenience in one or the other. But yeah, sure, we we know that many women, when they are on the pitch, they get harassed much more than, than men and of, of, of dress code. And I think that's not true. These are just people who have a different minds about women. Otherwise, dress code should never be um, an issue. But well, true women are body shamed because of the uh, of the dress code but yeah irene we uh we are happy that you comfortably embrace and dress in one you know the way you want yes you want to add something irene yes sure up. your hand up could you do you want to rectify something yeah i wanted to, to say something small about the men um <laughs> supporting their women, especially those that have women, those that have married women in sports, so much exposed like that, you know, something of the sort. But me, I must say my husband was so supportive and actually he's the one who would tell me, no, you don't need to see it. Look, this is what you love. You need to give it a push. So what I'm meaning is men, if you do not encourage your women, they will sit and relax because you're not giving them a go ahead inwardly. For us, naturally women, we have that, uh, like they were saying, like my fellow colleagues shared about confidence. We have little or less confidence unless it is pushed further. So if a man does not come out and tell you, you can, you can, I mean, it's still giving birth, I mean, it's still being a mother, I mean, it's all the responsibilities, you can still push and stay in sports. They will not put, put it up. They might be having a role model outside, but of course, that person is not getting as close as the man. So men, for you to encourage your ma woman to stay in sports will be a very great addition in the game of sports as far as women are concerned. Thank you very much. Contribution ushered us into our question. What, what can be done to improve um, and to, to make it better? to advance uh, sports, to advance women in, in sports. I'll begin with you, Pauline, then Anita. And please, uh, yeah, if you are, uh, yeah, you could, you could turn on your video for sure when you're speaking, if you can, yeah. If you okay, can. Thank you. 
Uh, my 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 first two is uh, I will first talk about parents. I'm suggesting if uh, radios and uh, social media platforms that maybe parents can access radios and whatever TVs. Maybe if people can really go and educate people about maybe the benefits or the goodness of sports amongst young girls or ladies. I think that would be of more importance to some of us because it will, is our jobs for scouting and calling up players to come and join the teams. Um, then uh, I'll talk about uh, giving equal chances to both Sorry. of us. Before we leave that point, do you mind sharing with us some of those uh, benefits in your view? In my view, um, football, like personally football, there's that thing of social capital. Personally, I believe in social capital because uh, uh, from my own experience, I got my internship because of uh, sports. I was a referee at some corporate league, they call it Mbara Corporate Club. And uh, when I was looking for internship, it was very hard for us because it was in COVID and uh, it was a short period of time that they, give, they gave to us. So a colleague connected me. So when I reached, it was easier. Someone's like, hey, you, you are a free. Wow, it eased my work. So I think that is one of the benefits that we got social capital, we get friends. And uh, more especially, and like another thing, we get, we get paid. We get paid because some teams that have finances have paid their players. Girls have gotten chances to go on the national team that crested cranes and other teams. We have FIFA referees. Uh, in Bara, we have one that is now Ada Shamira. She's paid, she's an international referee. So those are all privileges that we are getting um, from sports. And we have also gotten sponsorships like players have gone out to study because maybe they have done well in football, in volleyball, or maybe other coaches get employment. So I think there are a lot in sports that we can get when we remove those myths of umanya what what women can't do this. So that is all. Yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, well, and also health was health to play, you know. But yeah, you you please continue with. Yeah. the solutions you are giving. Yeah. Um, and another thing I'm, I'm suggesting or requesting that if, if, if the government can really push the girl child into sports, uh, especially they can give sponsorships. Me, I, I, I don't like the thing of we, we, we played and went to the national to the national level and and they always give us some specific points like on at a level that you have to attain so that they can add you those other sports, I don't know how they call them, those post point, okay, they gave you when you went for the national level. But to me, I think they should be considerate, especially to those who cannot afford, but they participated and they still have their talents. At least they consider them to have the that chance of attaining education at a chance maybe because of their talents. Yeah, then another thing I think they should equally pay and equally give chances to women, the same they give to men. But personally in FUFA, I thank FUFA. FUFA is really doing great on women, women football in Uganda because referees are really giving very many throats to participate. I give that credit to FUFA. At least I'm not complaining there. I don't know what is going on inside when it comes to payments, but our referees, women referees, have been given throats and chances to participate. Then I think um, another thing, we, we, if we can educate men that even women can play football, women can play volleyball, women can go in sports, and women can do perfect in sports, I think that thing of, uh, of, of uh, body shaming, you know, those ugly and funny words they tell us when we're on pitch, they can also... In decrease. I think those are some of my points. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that, Pauline. We are now going to Anita. Yes, one of the solutions that you would want to suggest.
Over to you, Anita. Anita, are you uh, still with us? Okay, uh, please, I, um, as we wrap up, give us some of those you know, solutions. You started off us, you started us off with some solutions, but you could, you, know, uh, you could be having more that you would want to suggest that many things you would, you would want to see change. Please uh, give us some of those. Irene. I, I'm, okay, concerning sports, I think the government is trying, I will use the word trying because they are not yet there. Um, what is quite absurd is if you're to see people that come to um, universities on sports scholarship, it ends there on gaining the scholarship for sports, you will rarely find um, like 80% like participating in sports at a university. Reason being, when they reach university, they have made it. And they feel like, like we're saying, the body word, that those things of um, how will they see me? Now I'm a university student, imagine a campus running around, you know? So it stops at that level. And I think somehow, somewhere, if there is anyone following up from the government, somehow discourages the government um, a program of um, giving scholarships to sports, sports women at the university. Unlike men, for them, when they, they reach university, they enter as sportsmen, uh, they fight for it. Maybe they're outcompeted, but they give it a try. But for women, it stops at scholarship level. So I think us, as, as, as uh, people have been there, we need to encourage those girls once they get the scholarship to continue, to continue um, playing uh, for football. And that I think football is a good game because if you have to see uh, its publicity is, is, is way better than any other sport. So for us volleyball, we have a very big challenge concerning publicity right from management up down to the, to the, to the last level. So um, if you uh, like club level, it has to be university up it. So that means it has to be um, from uh, secondary, then secondary goes back to primary and uh, the, the list is endless. So meaning the government cannot help much if we as individuals, we not push ourselves up. Uh, the only way the government can come in is if it, it if it is to look into these clubs that are trying to push up their best and then it, it, it at least pitches something small in those clubs or it works with other organizations like NGOs or the URAs, those national organizations and they say like uh, if you maybe let's say National Roads Authority uh, at the end of the year the profits that are made, like 10% should be attributed to sports. Maybe through that way, or to sports, yes, but to certain games, maybe each, each, each entity is given a game to pinch money in. It will help the sports, the sports um, people to grow and basically to focus on the women, because women, we are, are fragile. We are fragile. We rarely expose ourselves to get this and that. Once we do, they'll say maybe we're up to something or, you know. So if the government can do and put that role of every entity get 10% of what you have worked the entire year, pinch it may be to say hockey or football or uh, volleyball or netball accordingly. So I think there we can get something from the government. But the general thing of we can, um, you can go on a scholarship, it is not working, it's not helping us that much. And then um, like, and like uh, the previous, uh, speaker, is it um, she has very clean points, by the way. I, I, I just enjoy the way she's pushing up points. So I think she covered most of the of the way forward towards upping the, the women in sports. And that is so good. If someone can come up with such strong points and you feel, yes, we still have a hand in sports. Because our management, if you're to see the level of management, it is so down. And I don't know how we can be helped there because it starts with us. Omisha, we have to put up our best for people to back us up. It starts within us. So somehow, if we don't step up, if you're to see the previous 
president of UVF, Ghana Volleyball Federation, was a woman. But shockingly, she stood again. I don't think she got even 10% of the votes. Reason being, uh, uh, we cannot put back a woman again. A woman can't rule us again. So literally, you have only two leaders in volleyball up. Only the, the, the vice president as a must has to be a woman, the assistant, and the assistant general secretary. The must, must, must have a position. But other positions dominated by men. We need to open our eyes wide and do something. Otherwise, as women, we are not going to gain much in sports apart from playing for leisure, and that will make a little, it will not push us further. Yeah, that's my submission. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Anita. Over to you, Anita. Uh, way forward now. Employment opportunities. We as ladies, we need chances. For example, I request the federation, both sides, netball, football, volleyball, to consider ladies, to add more ladies in federations. Because we ladies, when we find that there are some ladies there, at least we get encouraged. We get confidence. We know that there are some people to push us. Then we have a problem of facilities, facilitation. We request the government at least to build more facilitation for ladies, more pitches for ladies, especially in football. Then they can at least get a chance to train more, to increase on their talents. Then we request media offices, media platforms, at least if we can manage to reach some parents around, especially those young kids. You find they have talents, but because their parents are not too close to sports to join. You find that someone is telling you, ah, oh, my daughter can't join football. Football is for men. That is a big challenge. So we request at least if you can get any way how we can preach that word of football in ladies, at least you can, it can help us. I think my colleagues have talked about many way forward that, that can help the ladies to move on, but we need more opportunities we need more opportunities in sports equal opportunities okay not giving men opportunities or boys opportunities then we leave girls aside in schools you find some schools they have but they have football for boys but there is no football for girls reason being they don't give us opportunities they don't consider us ladies in some schools in some institutions. I've been in many universities, they pray league, university league for boys, but I don't see university league for, for ladies. It's a big challenge. Then we need teamwork. Teamwork can help us to get even confidence. Teamwork, we need teamwork with our parents, with our elders, with our colleagues, then with our leaders. Otherwise, I think the rest Pauline and Irene have talked about them. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, sharing with us, Irene. Um, I, I want to put one more request. I think the general public should just get it off their mind that sports, women in sports are generally lesbian. That's what actually moves around once. Actually, I had the same thinking when I was still in high school. Uh, when I was senior one, a little kid, I would say, um, how can a, a girl play football? That means that one is kind of a man, you know? Let's put out that off our heads. Women in sports are not lesbians. Women in sports are embracing their talent and are, exp are trying to enjoy what they like and what is what has be been given to them by God. And uh, why I bring out that is we, we are organizing um, a tournament for only women for volleyball that was going to be in Kololo, but we got a letter from the Federation saying that we cannot because apparently Simani Lesibian is, is going on, uh, those things, LGBT. So we are trying to promote that, you know, 
it was a little bit funny and it was put on hold that they need to do further in the investigation. There is another one that is happening over the weekend. It's called All Girls Tournament. So they clinged on that and they were like, even all girls, they are at a verge of removing it simply because we cannot have a one gender tournament because it, it is going to promote lesbianism or homosexuality. But for men, it does happen and there is no one who talks about homosexuality. How come when it comes to the ladies' events, that's when such funny, funny things come up. So my cry to the public is really women in sports. Okay, some are, I will not say all of, all of us are not, but really let us focus on developing people's talents rather than clinging on funny, funny, negative things to bring them down. That's it. Well, I mean, thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for that. Honestly, if, if I could, I could also give, yeah, give you a standing ovation. That's important. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we shouldn't be putting barriers everywhere. It's already hard for women. And then you put barriers in pretext of, you know, all these other uh, political things that are going on. Women have a small space, but even that small space being infringed on, I think we have to wake up, we have to be sober as, as, as people, government, I mean, people have to be sober. You can't refuse. Uh, please, Anita, mute uh, your microphone. We cannot have um, people who are, I mean, we can't have a group of people who each, which is disproportionately oppressed. In fact, oppressing and one group is, is, is wrong, you know, but also using misinformation, not having information, enough information, and you're basing your decisions on speculation, on rumor. That is wrong for the country. Sports has always existed with or without, you know, all these political tensions, all these name calling of people, sports are always existed and women should be given the chance, you know. Let us not limit them. Men are not limited. Men continue to play their, in, in their leagues, like you've said. Men continue to do whatever they want to do. But it's on women that people draw the line. I think that is wrong. It's, it's, it's detectable to use biases, you know, already biases from another group. And again, putting those biases on an already biased group. So that is triple or intersecting um, biases against women. And that's simply unacceptable. It is not taking us anywhere. I also think it's important to, to, to gender mainstream sports you know, in each and every aspect. If schools, um, universities, institutions, leagues are putting up anything sports or any facility or undertaking any, any decision, it should have a gender element. It should uh, also um, weigh how that is going to impact on women. And that should be considered. So there should be a gender perspective on each and every decision that is taken. Unlike they have shown, people here have discussed sports facilities do not uh, favor women, you know, the pitches and all that, where women are not even welcome to be part of, uh, to, to partake or to share in those places. There are no sanitation facilities in many of these sports. And we know that um, it's important to have sanitation facilities for women because women are more affected in unhygienic places and places that do not have um, adequate and safe um, sanitation facilities, stereotypes. I think it's important that we fight to unlearn our stereotypes and then learn our unbiased thinking. We should do it with our prejudices because women are capable of much. We shouldn't be judging people based on their gender. No, I think the time is up for that kind of, of, of thinking. From the panelists here, you can also see that 
panel this year are actually educated people. There was a time people thought that people who do sports are not educated, they're school dropouts, but you can see our panelists here, they're all educated people. So sports is also for the educated. You should, you know, um, engage in it. And we should give equal opportunities, equal chances to, um, to women. Violence in sports continues to, to prevail and disproportionately and so much against women. We just have to be deliberate in all our spaces to ensure that girls, women are protected. There should be deliberate efforts everywhere. And men, men in sports, please stop the patriarchy in sports, stop machoism, stop toxic masculinity. What makes you a man is not how much power you show over women and over others, but rather how much sensitive you are towards the situations of other people. That's what makes you a man. Many men in sports are bullies. They bully women. They bully those they do not consider quote unquote man enough. They think being man is being so strong, physically strong, loading it on over other people. No. Labels that are given to women who participate in sports should stop. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't help. It's father chasing women away, calling them names. You know, it's, it's, it's going to father chase women away. Yet, we, as we discussed here, we've seen that sports breach of but they even supposed to breach is unemployment gap. So if you just women away, you also expanding unemployment, but also you denying us talent, you're denying people their uh, uh, inalienable right to exercise their rights and reach their God given potential. We can go on and on, but attitudes have to change. How we view women has to change. How we treat women has to change in sports. I thank you very much for being a part of this week's show. We thank our panelists, Anita, Pauline, and Erin for being part of this. We've learned quite a lot, and we believe that such conversations will impact society. They will change how we view issues to do with gender. We thank the Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV for bringing this together. I've been your host, Martin, and I wish you a great week. Thank you.